All right, let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you. We bless you. We love you. Uh, we give you praise for this opportunity to gather around your word tonight. We bless you and thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who is here right now, who lives in us. And we ask him to open up our understanding so we can comprehend your word in a brand new way. It is our bold declaration that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right. So um, good evening and praise the Lord. Thanks for joining us, either those in person or those virtually. Um, <laughs> we're, we're unpacking a whole lot of things right now. It's, a lot of things going on in our nation and, and just, you know, I might as well just deal with the elephant in the room, but we're definitely praying for the safety of <clears throat> first responders and people who uh, across the world, really, we are focusing our attention is on DC, but just, it's a very volatile time in our nation. So we, we want to be prayed up. And <laughs> of course, if you don't, you don't have to go out and hang out at night, I would advise you to stay home. <laughs> so, and, um, as we mentioned Sunday, we're, we're definitely praying for the next several weeks, you know, next two weeks in particular, um, that, um, you know, things go smoothly. We don't want anyone to get hurt. I mean, we've, we've already heard today that someone has been killed yes. um, in DC uh, due to gunshots. And so we, we want to um, <laughs> keep our nation in prayer because um, at the end of the day, we want to, um, we want to have peace. All right, so we've been, um, Sunday we began a new series about vision, and, and we said that um, during this time of the year in particular, uh, people talk about, you know, the goals they've set for themselves and, you know, just some of the things they want to see uh, transpire in their lives this year opposed to what happened last year. We start to, you know, uh, project and plan. And at the end of the day, we want to make changes in our lives. Um, it's never for the worse. We all want to make changes for the better. And so that's, that's kind of the backdrop of having the vision. And so we, uh, we use the scripture in Proverbs 21, uh, verse 5, out of the New Living Translation, where it says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. And we said that there were a lot of principles in this verse that applies to having a vision. And just to recap very briefly, um, we said a vision is a goal, it is a dream, something that you expect or you want to see happen in your life. And <clears throat> we said it's important for us to have a vision uh, because it just keeps us reaching, it keeps us striving and trusting and believing God. It, it helps us to move forward in life and, and with uh, the things that we want to see transpire. And one of the things I, I pointed out, and I think this is important because I struggled with this uh, years ago, you know, a vision doesn't necessarily or uh, have to come from God. It is, you know, the goal, um, we, we know God can give you a vision, God can put something in your heart, God can give you a dream. We, we have a biblical precedent for that, but Sometimes we just may want to see something happen in our lives, or we may just set a goal for ourselves. And I think it's perfectly fine, you know, as long as it's consistent, you know, with the will of God for our lives, as long as it's not immoral, it's not something that's illegal, um, you know, ultimately something that's going to glorify God. I think it's okay to have goals. Sometimes there are just some changes we want to see in our lives, um, and it is initiated by us. Maybe, you know, a, change or a goal to, you know, purchase a home, buy a car, lose some weight, you know, it may deal with your health and well-being, uh, may involve something that, you know, about with your career or, you know, opening a business, starting a business, something that, you know, starting a family, getting married or whatever the case may be. We, we may just um, desire to do certain things or we may desire to make changes in our lives. So I think it's perfectly fine. I don't think God is offended by that at all. I think he wants to help us with these things. And so um, one of the things we pointed out, and I want to stress tonight and, and go over again, because in this verse, um, in Proverbs 21, it talks about the importance of, have, uh, of good planning. And I found, again, being in church all my life, you know, around this time of the year, a lot of uh, preachers and churches are talking about vision. And we, we talk about vision or goal setting, but I found we don't spend a lot of time on emphasizing the importance of good planning. You know, we have to have a vision, we have to have a goal, but we have to have a plan in place in order to achieve that goal. Now, I'm gonna put a statement out here and, and I think I can prove it to you. But um, one thing I realize about God, and I think we see this in scripture, is that God never does anything without a plan. And if you look at scripture, 
you, you see this pretty consistent. He never does anything without a plan. Not anything. Even when you go back to creation, um, he created the world six days, seventh day he rested. That was planned. Okay. Um, when Jesus came to earth, it was planned thousands of years before he came on earth. We were planning for his arrival. That was completely designed by God. God told Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. So do you not realize God has a plan for every one of our lives? He never does anything without a plan. God has already planned for Jesus to return through the rapture. He has already planned for a new heaven and a new earth, okay? That's going to take place in the future. And so my point is this. If God never does anything without a plan, then we shouldn't either. And so if we're going to have a goal, if we're going to have a vision, we need to make sure we're taking the time to put a plan in place to ensure that vision comes to pass. Let me give you three things, and I will get into a little discussion and um, get some feedback from you all. I'm gonna give you three more reasons. We gave some reasons on uh, Sunday, but three more reasons why good planning is critical uh, to ensure that your vision comes to pass, whatever that vision may be, whatever that goal may be, whatever that desire or that dream may be. You know, let me give you some reasons. Well, number one, you know, good planning um, helps you put your idea into action. You know, anybody can have an idea, but you know, <clears throat> we know we need to put some legs to our feet. We have to have some action. Second thing is that um, vision is always the what. Good planning is the how to. You know, we, we oftentimes know what we want to do or what we want to see take place in our lives, but a plan is how to get it done. Um, this time of the year, everyone wants to lose weight, get back in shape. You know, they, the joke is come January, all the gyms are filled. <laughs> You know, but uh, and, and we all would love to lose a couple of pounds. I, I put my hand up first. But the question is, what, what plan do we have in place? What are we going to do different than what we did last year? All right, that's the plan. And the third thing is, and, and this, is, this is the benefit that Christians have in particular. Good planning is the time or it's where God gives you creative ideas is when he gives you wisdom on what you need to do in order that your vision happens. And so when it comes to this planning, this is where we can use our faith. This is where we can hear from God. This is where we can ask God for wisdom. Hey, what do I need to do? This is where we have the benefit because we're not just limited to our own natural wisdom or our own, our own natural understanding. We can pull on the wisdom of God who, by the way, lives on the inside of us. Uh, we have the, the Holy Spirit, who's the source of all knowledge and wisdom. He's actually called the spirit of wisdom in the Bible. And so when we have a goal, when we have a vision, we can say, hey, God, you know, uh, can you help me come up with the best possible plan to ensure that what I desire, my goal, my vision comes to pass? And I believe God will help us. And so that's, that's one thing we can do. I'm not telling you just to... Uh, pray without thinking. I mean, God gave us a brain for a reason. Let's face it. He wants us to think and brainstorm. And, and, but on top of our natural ability, we always have his supernatural ability. So he can tell us things that we didn't even think about uh, to put in place to make sure our vision comes to pass. So we, 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 we always have that benefit. All right. Get some feedback from you all, because I think this is a loaded topic and it's, it's, it's very popular too. And um, something that we, we can really I'm gaining a lot from and benefit from for our lives. All right. So question, get some feedback from you all, get your take. What, what do you think is the biggest mistake people make um, when they're planning to reach a goal? In your mind, what, what, what do you think the biggest mistake we make when it comes to planning? Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, Brother Swin. Um, good evening. Good evening, uh, Sister Liz. Good evening. Uh, Sister Nixon, if you're out there. Um, for me, I, I always try to bring it home. I think I plan too big. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah, I, did I need to lose 20 pounds? Yeah, but I said, well, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> 
And unfortunately, this Ryan Gay <laughs> Oh, so for me, I think it's planted too big. And over the years, I've, I've grown some wisdom and, and watch other folks, watch the smart people, how they do things, the experts, you know, all the people that are 100 times smarter than I am. And they say, start small steps. And it took me a long time to put this in, in, you know, in my spirit and things like that, but it made sense. So to answer your question, for me, I always start out big. <laughs> and it didn't work out that way. So I think I, I always, back home, back in the country, they say, I bit off more than I could chew. And it, it came back and it bit me. And, and after I got, I lost, I lost, I got discouraged. And I said, oh, forget it, I'll do it next year. So that's a good point. And I, uh, because, you know, with our plans and even with our goals, they, they do need to be realistic something that's attainable. I think that's a good point. Any, any thoughts, just just the biggest mistake people make when it comes to planning? Well, I'll have to say ditto to what Brother Swinton said, because it not only have to be about losing weight, but sometimes we just, we just set our expectations too high. And sometimes we just need to start off with small steps. Oh, I I agree. That's that's actually a very good point. I remember there uh, years ago when I was selling cars, there was a young lady who came to our lot, and she was in the process of repairing her credit. You know, she was kind of just getting start starting started out in life. You know, she was young, and this was her first vehicle, and so <clears throat> we just you know we're trying to you know hey get something that you can afford something that you know, that's reliable, it's going to be safe. And, um, and I remember she said to me, I'm like, she only wanted one car. And I said, what's that? She said, I want a BMW. I said, okay. I said, like, what's your second choice? He's like, no, I don't have a second choice. I said, well, you know, this, you know, you don't have a big credit history. I said, I have a bank that's willing to help you. I said, but they're very limited on the type of car that you can get. And so they're, they're gonna, they want to keep you at a certain budget. You know, she said to me, she said, um, no, if I can't get a BMW, I don't want anything. And I was like, what? Wow. She walked off. <laughs> so I was like, I mean, I thought she set her expectation way too high. I think we have to be realistic about this, you know, because, you know, sometimes, like you mentioned, Brother Swinton, when, when we don't plan appropriately and we buy it off more than we can choose, we get discouraged where we don't take baby steps to kind of build our confidence at least. And so we, we do have to make sure we're setting realistic goals. I mean, and, and let me tell you what, Christians, I hate to say it, we are the worst when it comes to bringing us back to reality. Now, again, we, we, we operate in two realms here. I get that. We operate in the natural realm. We operate in the spirit realm or that, that realm of faith. But, um, you know, God does want us to have common sense. You know, it's kind of like dealing with pandemic right now. The reality is people are losing their lives. The reality is people, including Christians, are getting sick. You know, now faith says that, you know, I can trust God and I, I need to do you know, things to keep myself safe. And God can heal me. But the reality is we need to protect ourselves. This thing is impacting us because we, we, we still live in this physical world. So I think we do need to have realistic expectations. I don't think that's a sign of a lack of faith. I just think that's a sign of wisdom. Uh, making sure we we set that goal to being something that's that's actually actually going to be attainable. You know, when I was in education, you know, um, you work with some kids. Sometimes their best, the best they can do, was a B in a particular subject. Maybe they were stronger in another subject, but I knew, and I wasn't going to discourage them. But they got a B. Um, that I, you know, um, for them, that's part was a win. It was the best thing for them opposed to getting the age. So we, we have to make sure we, we set realistic goals. I, I believe that. You know, one of the things I thought about with um, the mistake people make, I found that sometimes when it comes to, you know, we have goals, but when it, but when it specifically comes to planning, I just don't think um, people do a, do it. I mean, we, we people testify and they, they stand up and they always talk about what God spoke to them about or God gave them a dream. But a lot of times, I don't even think we spend time uh, planning like we should. I think we put more effort into coming up with a dream or a goal than we do actually planning on how we're going to get it done. That's that's what I see. I don't think we take the time to, you know, research things or pray or or, or uh, you know gather data on what what is really you know like Jesus said you know counting the cost. 
what is it really going to entail for me to achieve this goal? Whatever it may be, you know, what is it going to take? You know, what price do I have to pay? Like what, 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 do, what, kind, what level of sacrifice <laughs> will be required of me in order to get this done? So I think sometimes we just don't do it. Um, and, and, and I think it's a failure on our part as well. Um, now, in a general sense, let's, let's, let's bring this back to the body of Christ. What plans do you think we can put in place to win the world to Jesus? That's, that's a big one now, but you know, that's, that's the million dollar question. What, what are some plans do you think we can put in place, Christian body of Christ in general, to win more people to the Lord? What do you think? Obviously, that's, that's all of our goal, should be at least. <laughs> I would say two things. First, we need to be an example. We, we, we can't come to the sanctuary on Sunday and, you know, scream and shout that on Monday we, uh, we call our neighbor a bad name or something like that. So the first thing is we have to be the example, not just the example on Sunday or Wednesday, but be the example when I see you downtown on King Street or I see you at uh, BJ or something like that, you, you come up to me and greet me because I've seen people that they see me coming and I've done it myself, so I, uh, I can't sit here and say I'm Mr. Goody Two Shoes. And I change that. I, I don't care where you are. If I see you, I'm going to come straight up to you, eyeball to eyeball. And the first thing I'm going to say, How are you doing? I'm going to say, Hi, How's the wife? How's the kids? How's everybody that I'm going to talk about? about you? And the second thing I would say, stay in the word. Because the second world, they're going to watch you. They're going to watch you like a hawk, watch a chicken. Those two things, I think if you can nail them down and you're already walking in the spirit and you can't be shaking, you're steadfast, that will support you in those two efforts going forward. Repeat the question. Yeah, what, what, what plans can we put in place as Christians to win more people to Christ? Well, I think we have to be steadfast in our walk with Jesus. We have to let, you know, the world see that we are, you know, committed to what we say and what we do and it has to be on a daily basis. And I also think, you know, like just like Brother Swinton said, we have to stay in the word. And as the church as a whole, we have to try to get the word out, you know, to as many people as we can, just like we're doing now, either virtually or in person, or, you know, whatever means it takes. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. And, and, and I think that's why we need the word so much. And, and make no mistake about it, Satan's biggest uh, trap, if you will, is to take us away from God's word because God's word enables us to live this life, to be that example. Because you're right, if, if, if we're not an example, if we're not living by the word, living by faith, like there is no way. And, and that's where the work really comes in. You know, uh, you know it's hard enough getting people to church anyway or just being connected to a ministry um but even when we do so that's just you know one day a week two days a week uh the real work comes in when we leave church after the benediction is made and then we have to demonstrate what we've learned in front of our peers you know associates co-workers and our family and that's where the work really comes in but that's that is what resonates with people the most when people literally see a changed life and and, and that's our responsibility. And that's where we, we need God's word. We have to intake God's word and, and, and live by it. And that's one thing I put down to, we, we obviously have to preach the gospel through any means necessary, whether it's in person or virtually, we have to live the gospel. Then we have to demonstrate the gospel as well. We, 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 we have to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ is on full display in our lives. We're, we're his ambassadors, we're his representatives. And, and that's where the real work comes in. Um, and that can't be overstated. Um, people have to see a difference. We have to let our light shine. Uh, people have to see Christ in us. And 
if they don't see it, the likelihood of them getting saved becomes slim. Um, and, and again, God has no spare tires. He's counting on us. We're it. We're his hands. We're his feet. We're his voice here on earth. And so if we're making plans to achieve this goal, this vision. Uh, part of that plan will be to, you know, uh, you know, get the word on the inside of us so we can actually live that life. So, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's part of what we got to do. That's the plan. You know, now how we doing with this plan, we, we got to, you know, <laughs> check that and make sure we're, we're doing our part. But that's, that's definitely some things we, we have to do. All right, so since we're talking about planning, this is something that usually comes up. You know, when we have goals, we have a vision, or there's something we want to do, if there's just a change we want to see in our lives, let's say we put a plan in place. Um, to achieve a goal or to uh, make a change, what do we do if that plan fails? Try a different one. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Try, just, just don't do the same one over again, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't give up. We got to just, we got to keep on trying. You know, maybe that particular plan wasn't meant to be at that particular time. It's Sometimes nothing. you have to take a different route, a different avenue. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Any thoughts there, Brother Swin? <laughs> well, I, for one, I, in the, I gave up. I, I gave up because if somebody came in there and I looked across there, I said, man, this, this guy, is, is he's tight. You know, he's fit and everything. <laughs> I just say, I never get to that. Why Why am I here? You know, I just, I just threw in the tower and, and just, just gave up. And I think... And I don't mean this in a bad way, but just my observation from experience, um, most people give up. Sure, everybody want to do great things in January because it's after New Year and everybody will get fired up, but um, it's like running a marathon. It's like running a marathon. You, you don't start off fast. Yeah, there are some that start off fast and they can maintain that tempo, but I learned that you have to start off slow and steady to maintain the tempo. And, and as as you reach your goals, uh, you have benchmarks. I learned that word. If you have benchmarks, you reach those benchmarks, then you reward yourself, and that'll give you energy, that'll give you strength, and give you understanding to go to the next benchmark. And before you know it, guess what? You done, you done ran 26 miles. You done achieved that goal. You done lost that weight and everything. And I think in my past, now I, I close with this, I won it too fast, too soon. And I, I lost my confidence. I lost uh, that push, that drive. And I didn't say, forget it. I'll do it next year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that is a tendency. A lot of people give up. And um, now I'll pay you back of what you said, Sister Liz, as well, that, you know, well, first of all, let me say this. You know, when we plan to do something, failure is, is just a part of the process. Everyone experiences failure, no doubt about it. If you haven't experienced failure, you're probably lying or you never tried anything. And, um, but the fact of the matter is sometimes we make plans to do something and then we find out when we get into it that, you know, this wasn't a very good plan. <laughs> it's not working out. So yeah, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. So we have to maybe look at the plan and, and say, hey, where did it go wrong? Um, you know, we may have to tweak it and, and come up with a different plan, come up with a better plan, obviously. Um, this is just a part of life. And I, I thought I heard something today, and I hope I can, you know, touch touch on politics and not really get anyone upset. But um, you know, in politics, there always has to be a winner and a loser. You know, no one can win, whether it's um Senate races, um, congressional, um, presidential. And then, you know, one uh, there was a commentator that said, you know, if if someone loses, they have to step back and figure out, hey, what went wrong? What can I do differently moving forward? And I think in our lives as well, when we, we have goals and we put a we get to the point, we put a good plan in place. If it does not work out, we need to find out, hey, what exactly went wrong? Maybe the plan wasn't so bad, but there's just one element or one piece that um, we overlooked. So I think just common sense says that, you know, we, we if something doesn't go right, um, we need to try to fix it. And, you know, it's kind of like when we deal with issues on the computer or technology, um, we have someone who can troubleshoot the problem and find out them. And we pay people to do this, by the way. We pay people or we, we, we call people to say, hey, this is my problem. And they'll 
find out exactly what went wrong so we can kind of, we can make sure we don't either do it again or we can target the area that needs to be fixed. And so I think with our lives, with our goals, with our families, with, with our health, uh, with our ministries, with our children, whatever the case may be, we need to find out exactly, hey, if something's not working, why is it not working? Um, another thing I thought about is that when we plan, you know, we may want to run that plan by somebody, you know, someone who's an expert or someone who has experience, you know, with, uh, you know, something that we're dealing with. Hey, talk to someone, you know, get some feedback from somebody. Um, speak to successful others, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Or if something doesn't go right, hey, can you look at this for me? What, where did I go wrong? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I think these are just some things we have to do on, you know, on a practical level to make sure what we're planning for, what we want to do um, comes to pass. You know, I say it all the time, you know, God gave us common sense for a reason. Why would he give us common sense if he didn't expect us to use it? And so, you know, common sense tells us to look at some things. Um, but I will say this too, brothers, but a lot of times I think we do get discouraged and give up and, and, and we don't get back up and, hey, and try to find out, hey, what went wrong and uh, maybe we could be more successful moving forward. So um, uh, that's something we have. Can I yes, make a, just a statement? Yes. And I also found out that in past years as I learned too, like uh, Sister Lisa said, that, you know, you have a plan A and a plan B. And in our family, we, 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 we kind of kick it around, but we, we try to say, okay, plan A is the main plan, plan B is the backup. Yeah. And, uh, if, that, if those two don't work out, we just go shopping or plan C. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and we, we try to keep that mentality. It sounds kind of kind of corny, but um, uh, we try to keep that mentality because say, okay, but well, don't get discouraged, especially me. Don't get discouraged, you know, because the main plan didn't work out, but you you got to back up. Right. And of course, you know, being an ex-military person, if, if you can't take this hill one way, okay, what's the backup plan to take the hill another way? And whether you're going to call reinforcement artillery, call in an aircraft carrier out there in the Indian Ocean, you know, so I learned to have that, have that, uh, we say a hip a hip pocket, you know, plan, and it might not be 100%, but it'll be enough to uh, bring you across the finish line. No, I think that's a great point. I think, you know, it's, it's called a contingency plan. Like, hey, if plan A doesn't work, if this doesn't work, what are we going to do next? And I think that's, that's, I think that's just smart. That's just being wise because you never know how things are going to work out. And, and I had to learn this over the years that, hey, you know, if I have a plan, like, give it a try. You know, like, sometimes we will never know whether or not a plan is good or not unless we try it out, you know. And if it doesn't work, have something in place, you know, contingency plan on what we're going to do if this first plan fails. So, and I think that's good because, I mean, half the time we might fail. Um, but we need to prepare for that in the event it happens. So, and I think that's all what, you know, the Bible is, is, is bringing out in this passage in Proverbs 21, 5, where it says good planning. I think part of good planning is having a backup plan. And so, um, and, and so that when we are, you know, reaching after our goals or we're trying to make a change, if our first plan doesn't work, we won't just get so discouraged and just throw our hands in the air and then give up. So um, I think that's a good point. And, and I, I think it's, 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 it's critical for, for us to prepare for if things go wrong, what are we going to do? So, um, and, and like you said, I think smart people, that's just how they operate, really. All right, so this is another good question. I'll let you all elaborate. So how soon do we need to start making plans for uh, future goals, in, in your opinion? I mean, um, do we need to make plans days in advance, you know, weeks in advance, months in advance? You tell me, how soon do we need to make plans for our goals? Mm -hmm. I'll let Brother Swinton go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sister Liz. <laughs> I don't always have the answer. I'm saying my answer probably sounds kind of corny, but I try to give my life experience because for me, that's that's my teacher, my 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 embarrassment, my embarrassing moments in life. You know, that's where I learned my greatest uh, teaching and knowledge and stuff. Um, for me, I, I would try to do it. I say a year in advance. I mean, maybe six months to a year in advance. Just like now, I want to save my allowance 
and I want to, uh, I want to buy something. I want Santa Claus to bring me something this summer. So I say, okay, if you know, I got a dollar amount. So I say, okay, well, you need to start saving now. So for me, it, it all depends on the size of what I'm trying to accomplish. It, it all depends on, on what I'm trying to reach, what goals I'm trying to reach. Um, and then I use that as a, as a benchmark or as a, as a uh, uh, measuring stick. So if I want to say, in this case, I want to save quite a few money, quite a few thousand dollars. So I'll start already. And I said, well, how did I do that? I said, well, I don't know. Maybe you should, I'm going to have a uh, yard sale. Matter of fact, I don't want to publicize it. <laughs> I'm going to have a yard sale because I got stuff in the garage. I'm going to say, okay, I'll quarter here, quarter there, and take that money and, and, and stash it for towards the goal. So I, I would say, and I'll finish with this, it all depends on how big your goal is, what you're trying to achieve, where you're trying to go. Um, who you who you trying to you know to bring into the picture? Then you go ahead and add it to your plan or to your um, uh, to your mar market strategy. I guess what business folks say, and go from there. Or your market plan and go from there. Good point. Good point. Any any thoughts, to your sister Liz? If you let them go first. <laughs> <laughs> I think it all depends on what you are planning for. Uh, because it's always good to make plans in advance, but uh, the best I can say is just it's depending for me at what I'm planning for. It's just like during the holiday season, if you know how many people you're planning on buying a gift for, well, we can't, I don't wait until the last minute. I try to make that plan maybe about two months before. So... It just depends on what it, what it does. No, I, I agree. I think um, I don't know if I don't know if you can go wrong by planning too far in advance. <laughs> I mean, but I, I agree. I think it depends on what you're planning for. You know, you know how soon you start to put plans in place to reach your goal. Um, if it's a big goal, you may need to plan a good bit in advance. Um, if it's something that's small, it may not take that much planning uh, in terms of a time limit. Um, I, I realize, and, and uh, easier said than done, you know, during this Christmas time, I said, you know, I, we can't be waiting to Christmas or November or December. I said, man, we, we need to, I, I see why those banks start, allow you to start having those little savings uh, plans uh, you know, in January, <laughs> because it just, it just makes sense. That being said, I remember reading something about, um, uh, the Chinese and, and or some people in other countries, how they have and, and just kind of the way they think and how um, and I'm not saying it's just you know that nationality, but sometimes people they have like hundred year plans. You know they they plan centuries in advance. You know as a nas on a national level, of course. You know, but I mean we don't tend to live that long. But it's just amazing. They plan for generations down the line. And um, it's just amazing. That's how, you know, how much time people plan in advance. And I agree, depending on what it is, you know, if you're in your 20s, you start planning for retirement. I think that's great. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're in your 20s. And most people in their 20s, they're not thinking about retirement. Could you imagine if you had someone in their 20s already putting away, I mean, by the time they're 50 or 60, they, they'd be in great shape. You know, thinking about uh, college, how soon do you start to get ready, planning for children to go to school? You know, well, I know one thing you don't do, you don't start planning the senior year, their senior year in high school. So uh, whether it's retirement or whether it's got kids going to college, like you have to start planning right now, you know, when it comes to your health or whatever the case may be. Um, so I think it's wisdom to start early, um, but I think we definitely can make the case that there are a lot of instances where we wait way too late to plan. And sometimes we're reactionary and we don't plan enough in advance. And sometimes that's why we may not achieve the goal we have set for ourselves. You know, we talk about vision, as I said before, but oftentimes we don't think about how important it is to plan. And in this, in light of what we just said, we have to plan in advance um, to do so. Um, so it's just, it's amazing. I've, I've thought about some builders right now, especially with COVID, they're saying, you know, you know a lot of people, the, the housing market, market surprisingly is, is doing well. And they said, but now if you, 
it's going to take about eight to 10 months, you know, to, to, for them to plan to do it as well. So uh, that being said, with the plans, you have to take into consideration um, setbacks. You take into consideration things. I mean, right now, COVID has changed all our plans. I think it's <laughs> the dealing, because we're dealing with the pandemic, it's pushed a lot of plans back. You have to be ready to uh, adjust your time schedules as well. So I think all these things you have to take into consideration um, when you talk about having a vision and, and putting a plan in place to achieve that vision. But without question, it's never too early to start planning. I, I can't, and I could be wrong here, I can't think of um, a situation where it's you're planning too early. Um, I, I could be wrong. I don't know if y'all can think of anything off the top of your head, but I really can't think of a situation where you're making plans like, oh, you, you, you're doing way too early, way too early. So I, I think, um, you know, better early than too late. I think that's, that's definitely going to be the wisest thing to do. So, so obviously we, um, you know, with the vision, the key is we, we have to put a plan together in place. I can't stress that enough. I really believe that's what Christians sometimes drop the ball. And, and I, and I, as I mentioned Sunday, I think that's what we don't understanding about hearing from God in particular and, 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 you know, prophecy or whatnot. We don't understand, you know, importance of putting some plans in place. Now I, I, I saw a quote here. I'll, I'll say this, um, and the quote was that a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. A good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. What does that mean to you? What, do you, what does that say to you? A good plan today is better than a perfect plan plan tomorrow. And the second part of this quote is, it has been said that, you know, a, a plan must be sound, if not perfect. What, what, are any, what do those mean to you? What do to you think me, about it? I feel like you shouldn't put off what you got to do today for tomorrow, because you don't know what tomorrow may bring. But if you have a plan to do something today, then I feel like, you know, you should carry out that, that plan for today. Even if you just plan to go outside and tend to your plants, then do it. Don't wait till tomorrow because, you know, tomorrow may not, you know, it just may not happen tomorrow. That's all I can say. You know, tomorrow got his own problem. It brings his own his own troubles or whatever. So whatever you got to do today, go on and do it. You know, sometimes we have to plan things on a daily basis. You know, well, I'm going to do ABC today, you know, and do it. That's, that's my take on it. Any other thoughts there? A good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. I think it sounds almost like hindsight is 2020. Because once you get to tomorrow, you know, you probably don't you of course, we can all come up with a good plan for yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. Like, we look back, exactly. Any thoughts there, Brother Swinton? Good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow? I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I agree with both the sisters because that good plan that you have today, it might be not 100%. But see what you're doing, and, and I've done this myself, I think a lot of people, they wait until they have the perfect plan to start their business. They have the money in place, they have the people in place, they have the, the, the vendors, they have the client, they have it, and now I got it perfect because I got everything covered. So tomorrow I will start. And guess what? Overnight, the market drops out. So they had a plan to say, okay, I, the plan I have today is not good, but it's, 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 you know, it's something that I can do. It's doable. So I, yeah, but I want to wait till tomorrow because that plan looks better. And then it'll give me more credit. That's a good point. That, that's a loaded subject because I know a lot of people um, don't put a good plan in place or don't move forward with their plans because they're just waiting for things to be perfect. And, and, 
sometimes things never get perfect. We have to try to move forward with the best plan in place that you have right now. I remember I served under a pastor, several pastors I served under, and I, I remember she had since passed away. Um, I remember her talking to me, and she said one of her biggest mistakes was um, they started ministry out of their home, their living room, and then they were, you know, eventually you, you can't stay in a living room if you're going to grow a ministry. You just can't. Um, you can start off. I've known people who started businesses out of their garage, um, you know, to keep their overhead low. I think that's smart to do because you don't want to be paying a bunch of money, you know, um, when you don't have a lot of startup costs, you know, especially if you're not trying to get a lot of loans. But the, but you can't stay there if you're going to grow. And I remember she said one of her biggest mistakes was she stayed in her living room too long. It just was a bad plan. I mean, you know, the overhead was low, stayed there way too long. She said, Byron, said, my problem was I was waiting for things to be perfect to move, you know, and just sometimes things never are necessarily perfect. And so I, that's what I think about because we all make mistakes. We have goals, we have aspirations, we have a lot of things we want to accomplish, but we all make mistakes um, along the way. And sometimes we're waiting just for that perfect plan um, to be in place before we start to reach for our goals. And a lot of times um, that perfect plan is not there. And we all know part of our learning process, we learn on the job, it's like on the job training. And so I think we need to come up with a good plan to reach our goals. We do everything to put the best plan in place, whether we talk to people, whether we do research data, whatever the case may be. Again, we have a vision, we have a goal, you know, come up with a good plan, and in reality, um, understanding that the plan may not be perfect. I may have to tweak things along the way. I may have to backtrack and say, oh, you know, I'm not going to do that again. But I think when we have a good plan and move forward, I think that's better than just sitting on the sidelines waiting just for the perfect time to do things. So, you know, this, this is a very loaded subject. As I said before, you know, this is the time of the year where we're trying to, you know, make changes in our lives. But I, I stress that as Christians and as people in general, uh, and again, this is what the Bible says. I'm going to revisit this verse one more time. This is in Proverbs 21, uh, 5. Now, again, this is out of the New Living Translation, so it, it words it a little different, but I, I like how it translated, translates this verse. It says, good planning leads to prosperity. And, and, and to me, that's a biblical principle, that if I have a vision, if I have a goal, the next thing I need to do is put a good plan. It may not be a perfect plan, put a good plan in place, and then trust God with the rest to, to see to it that that plan comes to pass. All right. All right. Any questions, any comments, prayer requests, praise reports? All right. All right. I wish I can see comments by virtual audience, just in case we ever have. I'm, 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 I'm working on this. Hey, one of my plans in the new year is to uh, get better with this this virtual <laughs> piece, and and we don't have a choice because we're uh, we're going through this this pandemic. Maybe it may be a while. I'm not trying to make a negative confession, but it, it may be a little while. Just as uh, to give you a couple of announcements, um, again we're at Magnolia uh, Baptist Church for the foreseeable future, uh, 1234 Highway 61. Sundays at three, but in January, we'll be changing our services to Saturday at three, still at Magnolia. Uh, so we have an in-person worship experience. Again, temperatures are checked at the door. We were, we're trying to allow only 30 people in. And then that way, when we record it, we'll send out those videos to our, our virtual uh, members and, and those who connect with us virtually so we can send it out to them uh, bright and early Sunday morning. So we can you know, get used to being in that at worship mode on, on Sunday. So we made that change. And other than that, we don't have anything alarming uh, other than that. But we'll, we'll send out some reminders that um, come February, we'll be changing our services from Saturday at 3 p.m. to Sunday to, from 3 p.m. to Saturday at 3 p.m. as well. All right, so we'll wrap it up in prayer and then we will close. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you so very much for helping us to understand how important it is for us to uh, put a good plan in place for the vision that we have uh, for
for our lives. We understand the importance of having a vision and, and the setting, the importance of setting goals for ourselves. So help us, Lord, give us wisdom, give us insight, give us understanding so we can put the best plan in place so we can achieve that goal as well. And we know that you will help us in all things. You are our helper. You are a provider and you give us everything we need so that the vision will come to pass. And give you praise, honor, and glory for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. All right. Amen. God bless you, y'all. Y'all um, have a blessed week. Stay safe. Yes. Um, hey, don't stay out late next couple of weeks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, stay safe. Don't get into any political arg uh, conversation with anybody. Yeah. Any arguments, nothing like Just let that go. <laughs> yeah. Y'all take care. First lady and the, the babies there, Pat. Absolutely. Thank you. Y'all be blessed. We'll see you again. We love you. Yeah, All right. Good.